Welcome to the Houston Methodist Congenital Heart Awareness Week 2020. I am Dr. Valeria Duarte. I'm one of the adult congenital heart disease specialists here at Houston Methodist. I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Nadia Fida. Dr. Fida is an advanced heart failure cardiologist uh, at Houston Methodist, and she is the medical director for heart failure at Houston Methodist Baytown. Dr. Fida, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. We were going to briefly discuss a, a clinical case that we have recently encountered in our practice. Dr. Fida, I'll, I'll ha let you take the lead. Yes, so we are talking about today a 24-year-old woman that initially presented with worsening shortness of breath, orthopnea, lower extremity edema, and palpitations. She was told she had a heart murmur when she was eight years old, but she did not have any surgeries. She had not seen a cardiologist since childhood. On exam, she was tachycardic and had a loud continuous murmur heard all over her chest and back. Labs demonstrated hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, elevated BNP, and lactic acidosis. Her blood cultures grew streptococcus mutants. Now, to start with our first question for the audience, what cardiac defects causes a continuous machinery murmur? A, mitral regurgitation. B, bicuspid aortic valve with aortic stenosis. C, a patent ductus arteriosus. Or D, pulmonary regurgitation. It is C, patent ductus arteriosus. For the second question, which cardiovascular structure does the patent ductus arteriosus connect to from the descending aorta and causes a left to right shunt? A. Aorta and superior vena cava. B. Aorta and pulmonary artery. C. Pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. And that is a B. Aorta and pulmonary artery. Thank you, Dr. Fida. So, a patent ductus arteriosus was exactly what our patient had. As Dr. Fida highlighted, this is a connection between the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. The, the duct is supposed to close short after birth, but in some patients it remains open, causing anomalous flow from the aorta to the pulmonary arteries. This is what the patent ductus arteriosus looks like in, on CT, and I'm highlighting it here with the arrow. So let's take a look at our patient's echocardio echocardiogram. If we, if we pay attention here to this area, we will see that there is a continuous red jet that in the in very close proximity to the pulmonary valve and in the pulmonary artery. That continuous jet is coming from the aorta, is the flow coming from the aorta across the duct to the pulmonary artery. If we take a look at other echocardiogram views, we can see here in this parasternal long axis image, if we focus in the aorta, that there are structures, abnormal structures attached to the valve. These structures are very concerning for vegetations. Moving over, uh, when we put color on, we can see that there is significant aortic valve regurgitation. Moving on to other views, here we focus on the pulmonary valve and we can see that the pulmonary valve also has st abnormal structures that are very concerning from veget for vegetations and we can see more structures here in the proximal pulmonary artery as well. These findings are associated with regurgitation too. We further investigated with a cardiac MRI and we found out that the that both ventricles were significantly dilated and the right ventricle had, it was dysfunctional. In addition, we confirmed the presence of a patent ductus arteriosus, the presence of aortic, significant aortic regurgitation, as you can see in this picture, and the presence of 
significant pulmonary regurgitation as well. So this takes us to our third and last multiple choice question, Dr. Fida. Yes. So after the case, let's learn about what are the complications of unrepaired patent ductus arteriosus or PDA. A, pulmonary hypertension, B, left ventricular volume overload, C, end arteritis, or D, all of the above. It is D, all of the above. So moving on with our patient, she became acutely ill with cardiogenic shock requiring milrinone support. Her renal failure continued to worsen. Her hemolytic anemia continued to worsen. So the multidisciplinary heart team decided that she needed urgent surgical intervention and she was taken to the operative room. In the OR, during surgical exploration, they found a large amount of vegetation in the ascending aorta and the aortic root, as well as in the aortic valve, the LVOT, the mitral valve, the pulmonary valve, and the pulmonary artery. The surgeon perform, performed debridement of the LVOT and the pulmonary valve vegetations. He replaced the aortic valve with a mechanical valve. He also replaced the pulmonary valve with a mechanical valve and repaired the mitral valve with autologous pericardium. Postoperatively, she did very well. She was extubated in postoperative day one. She was wind off inotrope support on postoperative day five her renal function returned to baseline and she's now back to work full time. We are frequently encountering more patients with adult congenital heart disease. Childhood murmurs should not be ignored. It is imperative that a referral is made to adult congenital heart disease specialist in a timely manner. This case highlights our ability to take care of a very complex patient with multidisciplinary team. At Houston Methodist Hospital, we have full spectrum of cardiovascular services available to serve our patients. Thank you, Dr. Fida, for supporting our ACHD team. And thank you, everybody. To learn more about this exciting new area, join us all week for Houston Methodist Congenital Heart Awareness Week activities. And to learn even more from patients and national experts, join us at the Houston Methodist Adult Congenital Heart Virtual Symposium on November 7th.